Um, the, the next speaker tonight um, is um, Jareen Imam. Um, she was talking about um, women do news um, and how um, you can increase equality of women journalists um, on Wikipedia. Um, Jareen. Hi there. It's Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I am going to share my screen so that we can get started. So let's see, I'm presenting. Uh, can I get a verbal confirmation if people can see this? Yes. Great, awesome. So um, my name is Jarini Mom. I am currently working at a tech company, but before that I was a media leader for over 10 years at companies like CNN, CBS, and recently NBC News. Um, I'm one of the founding members of Women Do News. So what we're going to be talking about in this talk is we're going to discuss what Women Do News does. We're going to do a really quick overview about the history of the erasure of women from media history. We're going to also talk about um, why it's so important to be adding the voices of women on to uh, the internet in the form of biographies and how you could be a part of this movement in order to increase inclusion, equity, diversity, safety, etc. So let's get started. So what is Women Do News? We're a nonprofit, um, and what we focus on is raising the voices, profiles, and stories of female journalists on Wikipedia. And we do this in an effort to hope um, to close the gender gap in the media industry while also increasing DEI, which is inclusion and diversity in the media industry. So why is this work important? Well, there's um, unfortunately some systemic issues in the media industry, which I'll go into further in this talk of women, non-binary journalists, not um, journalists that are from different backgrounds, not always getting the attribution um, and credit for the work that they've done. And these accomplishments, especially those that are highlighted on Wikipedia, have a direct impact on um, increasing not just the notoriety of the journalists, but also their credibility and can also uh, help bring awareness to the kind of reporting that they're doing. Also, um, this kind of work is adding biographies of notable journalists online can increase safety for journalists. So we'll go into that as well. And as I mentioned, it can help with inclusion. So how did we get started? So when Mindy News got started in uh, 2019, um, there was a group of women that were selected for a fellowship called 50 Women Who Can Change the World of Journalism. I was one of the fellows and one of the big projects that we had to do during this fellowship was to think about something that could be helpful, disruptive, tangible, and really help move the needle in the in media industry. And um, a group of fellows from this program decided that, you know, instead of re like inventing another website, instead of creating a new workflow, what if we took some of the most important, powerful websites in the world and created a mission or campaign that helped um, increase equity uh, for female journalists. And that's how we decided to create Women Do News um, with a focus on bringing notable journalists onto Wikipedia. And the photo on the, the photos here actually is one of our first um, in-person edit-a-thons in New York City. That's one of the things that um, our organization does is that we teach people how to contribute onto Wikipedia, uh, which we'll discuss later is why that's important. And we also host edit-a-thons where our group will um, work with individuals, classrooms, newsrooms, tech companies in order to host edit-a-thons to create articles or centered around whether it's a topic or a group of journalists or a mission and try to get those articles up on Wikipedia. So why are we doing this? Let's go back in history a little bit. There's unfortunately a history of 
women being excluded from the record despite their contributions to the media industry. And there are so many examples of this, unfortunately, um, that there's uh, there could be a whole talk on this, but um, we're just gonna do a really quick overview and share that historically women have been excluded from the record. There are so many examples, and like in the US, um, I have a couple of journalists here, their photos, um, Winifred Sweet and Elizabeth Cochran, who were stunt reporters. And what that meant was they operated as investigative journalists under pseudonyms, and they did incredible work around uncovering child labor abuse um, and scams and um, really horrible things that were happening in during the Industrial Revolution in the US and their work was published in some of the biggest newspapers of the time. They were never given bylines, they were never acknowledged for the work that they've done, and only recently have women from the past, a female journalist, been highlighted through efforts like Women Do News and, and Women in Red and other um, uh, nonprofit organizations that are trying to help insert these women back into the history that they've been erased from. And this is not something that um, this this is not something that's like happens in the past. Women today are still omitted from the record. Um, there are so many instances that I've seen. I've had journalists come to me and in my organization talking about how they've been omitted from awards that they've contributed to reporting on. They've been, their bylines have been stripped out of stories. And some of this is a systemic issues in newsroom culture. And um, although we can't, you know, single, singularly as a group fix every newsroom, what we can do is... Um, highlight the incredible work that female journalists are doing that are notable and are making a direct impact on um, the public. And we can start elevating those stories and voices on other sites like Wikipedia. So an example of this um, as well, uh, continued omission of female journalists. This is especially true of women of color. I wanted to show this example of um, Marvel Jackson Cook who was a pioneering American journalist and writer, um, civil rights activist. And she worked for a mainstream white owned newspaper um, during the uh, early 1930 or uh, 1900s. Um, and uh, what, uh, what just is so incredible is Women Do News added her, she didn't have a uh, Wikipedia page at all. And we noticed this in 2020 um, when we were doing some research around just journalists who have been omitted from history and um, from the record. And we added her profile on her biography onto Wikipedia and it got a really great reception. And we had a lot of really great citations. She did some incredible work um, in reporting around civil rights and we were able to add that onto Wikipedia. And it's just kind of incredible that her, her biography didn't get onto that website until 2020. So, so why Wikipedia? Um, the biggest reason is it's basically the fifth most visited site in, in the world. And it is incredibly powerful in how it ranks on Google. Meaning if you look somebody up or you look something up there, if, if there's an article on Wikipedia about that subject matter, it will show up as one of the first search results on Google. This is important for a lot of reasons. Um, a lot of folks don't realize that around the world, there's only a few sites that um, actively are global, Wikipedia being one of them, and um, being a search result that uh, comes to the top of Google has a really big impact when it comes to the information space, um, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, in addition, Wikipedia is, it's just such a rich repertoire of information. In fact, there are 2 million biographies in English Wikipedia, but only 18% of those biographies are about women in general, and, um, and let alone women journalists is a really minute portion of that. 
Um, so we wanted to leverage the strength of Wikipedia, that domain dominance on Google, on the internet, and find ways of adding notable female journalists onto that website. So one of the one of the other reasons why we want to add women, notable women onto Wikipedia is because there's been an um, a growing increase of online harassment against female journalists. These are some stats that are taken from the International Women's Media Foundation, IWMF. They've done a lot of extensive work on um, monitoring the increase of harassment and violence against female journalists. And um, Wikipedia is a way to help amplify the profiles of female journalists where there's um, object, uh, objective information about them because there are some organized efforts, whether that's around um, state-run sponsored uh, events or political leaders or trolls that don't like the kind of reporting that certain female journalists are doing that can orchestrate online harassment and um, in a clear effort to silence women. So having a strong internet presence and reputation can help combat that type of harassment. Um, just adding to enough, some more examples, like the, these are a few journalists in India that have done really powerful work um, holding politicians, the Indian government to account, and they have, eat, all of them have reported extensive harassment, bullying, et cetera. Um, one of the things that has happened in recent years is the ability for anyone to write anything about you. And you may have seen the rise of these um, businesses called reputation defenders, uh, where basically these companies say they'll take down whatever fake article there is about you, but it's a vicious cycle and it's really hard to, once like you are doxxed or once you are a target of a troll campaign, especially one that might be operated or supported, it's really hard to take down that um, egregious information about yourself. But um, if you're able to have um, a, a, a biography about your work and who you are and um, the kind of reporting you do on Wikipedia, that trumps all of that like fake information about you because it is surfaced at the top of Google because it's sourced from Wikipedia, which has a very rigorous citation process in order to um, have published articles on their website. Um, in addition, an, another example of how female journalists are also targeted by literal strongman leaders, um, whether that's India or Brazil, even in the US with um, our former president, um, there have been instances of journalists being harassed by some of the most powerful people in the world um, or having the narrative shift or their um, their their credibility in some way questioned. And so having the ability to ultimately have um, an article like Wikipedia can can actually help support a, a journalist's credibility. So here's an example of what I mean by that when, um, when I talk about Wikipedia being able to combat online harassment. Um, Maria Ressa is a very famous journalist. She's a CEO of Rappler in the Philippines, and she has been the target numerous times by Duterte uh, for her work and her newsroom's work against um, corruption. Um, they've done a lot of great work on that, and she has been targeted, her newsroom has been targeted with trolls, with malicious um, information about her and her journalists. She's even like been imprisoned. Um, but when you look on Wikipedia, when you look on Google, if you look up Maria, Maria, you will find that her Wikipedia page is the number one um, search result. And and we have something on the right, right hand side that Google has had introduced for a couple of years called the knowledge box. And the knowledge box 
actually sources from Wikipedia. It gives photos of the journalists. It gives um, a information about where they worked, some articles that they have contributed to or have reported on. And this actually can help stop and combat misinformation. Uh, Google actually launched a release of press release in June 2021, um, where you can see on the right-hand side a demo of what um, the iteration of the knowledge box, like the, the version uh, of enhanced version of this, where readers who are interested in learning more about the journalists and their work can um, now see this feature is slowly being rolled out. There's a couple of uh, people around the world who have this beta feature where you get information about the journalists, which is again sourced from Wikipedia, and it's uh, cross-referenced with um, articles that the journalist has contributed to. Um, and this is a way for uh, readers to be able to tell, like, hey, this is a this is a real journalist who has who is credible, who has work attributed to them, who works for uh, um, a renowned publication, etc. So what are some of the challenges um, of all this great work that we're trying to do? There's a couple of things. So first is cultural norms. Most editors on Wikipedia are men. And the way human psychology works is that we all do this. We all have unconscious biases. If all the uh, editors on Wikipedia were women, there would also be some unconscious biases. But what we see with the fact that it's all men is that most of the biographies are about men and also um, the way that communication happens on Wikipedia between editors. Um, some have reported to be toxic, like other editors, like women who have tried to join and contribute. So we're trying to work on reframing and changing that by teaching everyone, what men, women, anyone in between, how to become a Wikipedia editor and giving um, you the support that you need in order to thrive and succeed on that platform. The second big thing is technical experience. Wikipedia is not always the most intuitive site. It hasn't really, it, it's improved, but it hasn't really changed. We're very used to now the iPhone, like easy to use, press a button, things are done for you. Wikipedia doesn't work like that. It very much still has the feeling of WordPress. And if you're not a child of the 90s, um, or if you haven't like worked on WordPress, it can feel scary. Um, so what we try to do at Women Do News is uh, equip editors with just the technical experience of how do I even navigate Wikipedia? How do I write an article? How do I add a citation? And um, one of the biggest challenges of all, all of this is notoriety. Some of the hardest things um, when it comes to adding female journalists onto Wikipedia is there's a notoriety need, which means um, Wikipedia has something called you need to have not notability in order to be on Wikipedia. You have to have some kind of contribution to society, to the industry. For example, um, if you did work on, I, I did some reporting at NBC around, um, ar around uh, detention centers and uh, in the US and that work was then cited by the ACLU. It um, was, utilized and referenced in Congress and legislation, that would be considered notoriety um, because it had a direct impact. That reporting had a direct impact on society in some way. It went on to influence bills, et cetera. So it's a, it can be quite challenging though because oftentimes female journalists might not even get the byline in their newsroom or you know the way culturally newsrooms work um, they, they might not ha have articles, third-party articles written about them because they are the journalists writing the article about the news event. No one's really writing about them. So this is a challenge that we constantly face when trying to find citations for biographies. And as I mentioned, um, although it's a challenge, it's also a really big benefit that Wikipedia is super rigorous about citations. Every line, every sentence you write in Wikipedia must be cited to something third party um, that validates where you're getting the information from. It helps with 
the stopping the spread of misinformation. When you look on Facebook and Twitter, no one has to cite sources for anything. Or if they're citing sources, there's not really um, a check on the, the quality of the attribution. Um, whereas Wikipedia has layers of editors that will look through your citations and we'll see, is this a reputable source to be citing from? You can't write a Wikipedia biography citing somebody's LinkedIn or personal Twitter. That's not how it works. You have to be citing from a publication. Like if the New York Times wrote about this journalist and their work in, for example, reporting in a war-torn area, that is a citable source. So how do we fix all these issues? How do we start changing the world? The biggest thing is just to, you know, sign up to be an editor. And you can do that on our website, womendonews.org. Um, we teach people, students, how to become Wikipedia editors. We have consultants at our um, nonprofit as well. We go to universities, journalism conferences where we hold edit-a-thons. This has this is really not that hard to get involved in, and it has real tangible impact because a biography on Wikipedia can have an immediate impact on the search results of the journalists and their profile, the kind of information being spread about them, and then their increasing their credibility and their notability and also informing readers. This is a real thing that one can do in order to impact and influence change. So what have we done so far? Um, since our inception in uh, late 2019, we've added 30 articles um, that are completely new. Um, the approval process is stringent on Wikipedia, so 30 is actually a good number. Um, we've improved 10 existing articles. We have collected um, almost 120 nominations for female journalists that others in the, in the industry believe should be on Wikipedia. We work directly with Wikipedia. You can see they're literally tweeting about us, um, which is incredible. We also host trainings and talks. Um, a week and a half ago, we had a uh, a really great um, workshop with Google teaching how, uh, teaching our editors how to do really great citations and how to do advanced searching um, for journalists. Um, or And this was, we host um, trainings like this for women do news are totally free to attend. In addition, we do talks with Wikimedia, which is the media um, communications front of Wikipedia. And in this talk, we talked about um, the importance of journalists in countries that might not oftentimes have highly supported media and how Wikipedia is a way to help those journalists in less funded and resourced areas get the information and tools they need to tell really important stories. And um, we also do a lot of great uh, reporting and um, talks around, around conferences. This is one during Asian American Heritage Month where we talked about, uh, we worked again with Wikimedia highlighting Asian um, female voices and Asian voices on and why it's important to have those stories and narratives highlighted on Wikipedia because it helps shape public sentiment. So if you want to get involved, it's really easy. All you have to go and do is sign up for our newsletter, which you can do on womendonews.com or womendonews.org. And you'll see on the right-hand side, it, there's a place where you drop in your email and you get um, our newsletter and it tells you what we're doing, what events are happening, how you can be a part of an edathon, an article that you can directly start contributing to. And it is truly that easy. So I hope that this is helpful, enjoyable. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'm also on Twitter and all other social media if you want to talk more about this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, there are two questions. We only have a few minutes, but um, there are two questions in the chat. Um, Marcella is asking um, a bit more on, on um, how do you measure the efficiency of, of the project? 
Um, so, for example, you say if people have see an article on Wikipedia, it can help offset the impact of other malicious online content. Um, but how did you reach this conclusion? What kind of the data is behind this? A lot of it's anecdotal right now. Um, so we've had journalists who have had like articles on Wikipedia that they've said really benefited them where like a reader has been like, oh, hey, uh, I for like we had this one journalist who was reaching out to sources and the sources were like, I don't know if you're real. And then they just literally Googled this journalist found their Wikipedia article, went back to a journalist and was like, I saw your Wikipedia article. Okay, I'll do this interview. Um, so it's all it's anecdotal right now, but there's a lot of correlation. We work very closely with organizations that do track harassment, that do track abuse. So we do know that the work we do has a direct correlation with safety and credibility. Thank you. Um, Andrew ask, um, Andrew, I hope, um, you know, I, I'll read it correctly. And um, so I've, I've heard, um, says Andrew, of similar things for female scientists getting bogged down in arguments about whether it is acceptable for people suspected of being men to ask women to provide references for Wikipedia edits and whether being female is in itself notable. Has this arisen here? Um, has it been addressed? I think that's interesting. I, I think there so yes, there's definitely situations of, it, it is very rigorous to add articles onto Wikipedia. There are, I, I don't know if there, it's totally based on gender in terms of getting that kind of like very intense input and feedback, but just being a woman doesn't constitute getting an article on Wikipedia. No, there's a lot of notoriety needs. So as I mentioned, like, are there articles written about the journalists that highlight their contributions to society? Um, that is notoriety. What we've seen, though, is because of this unconscious bias where there's more male editors on Wikipedia, there just happens to be more articles about male journalists um, in general across Wikipedia. But if you look at the media landscape, there's actually now more female journalists in the industry than ever before. But yet the number of uh, biographies about female journalists hasn't really increased in years. So that is significant. And therefore, we do need to take a closer look at why that's happening.